What is going on everyone and welcome to r slash choosing beggars. In today's first story, an entitled couple scam a small charity out of thousands of dollars worth of Christmas gifts. But before we jump into that one, if you guys want some Christmas gifts of your own, then look no further than my merch. As you can see on screen right now, there are loads of different colors of t-shirts available. In fact, I'm wearing a pink one right now, my personal favorite. And there are also loads of hoodies as well in all loads of different colors if you want something a little bit warmer for Christmas. So yeah, please go ahead, check it out. Out, link down below in the description the pinned comments and behind the i button up here lovely with that being said let's get into today's first post we for sure have kids we just can't recall their names ages or genders it's that time of year again the holidays can bring out the best of us and it can bring out the worst in choosing beggars on to the story I run a small local children's charity that gives holiday gifts to underprivileged children. The process is a parent or guardian fills out an application and then sends it to us. Within the app are questions about the child's interests and wish lists. We have in big bold letters on the very top of the page saying we do not give out bikes or electronics. Though a lot of people still put bike and a list of multiple electronics as their kids interests. In some cases, only those things. When a family of seven applies and every kid wants a bike, Xbox, PlayStation, and DS, nothing else, we can't take them. Like I said, we are a very small charity. We are family run and nearly entirely self-funded. We cannot afford to give out electronics or bikes. On the rarest of occasions, we get a donation or find some crazy deal and give those out, but it's very rare. We also try to only do families once, but some families we take year after year. We've unfortunately been scammed before, but this one takes the cake. This family was a little different because they didn't apply to us directly. A large local organization we had worked with recommended us to them and them to us. We had worked so closely with the woman at this other group, we wanted to help her out and take this family she so highly recommended. We sent them the application, asking them to fill it in and send it back. Time went on and they never filled it out. We called to remind them and nothing. Eventually, we just called to say we don't need the rest of it, just the kids' info. Names, ages, genders, clothes, and shoe size and interests. They sent one of those things. We got the kids' wish list. Xbox, PlayStation, Wii, this was a few years ago, so it was still popular, Nintendo DS, tablet, laptops, iPhones, games, and accessories for all. All three kids had all of those things on their lists. We kept calling them to get the kids names, ages, sizes, and other interests. After many calls, we got ages and some sizes. I called red flags from the start. These people couldn't even tell us their kids names. They took so long figuring out their ages even. Had they applied directly to us, it would have been an easy no. But because it came from such a reputable, trustworthy woman and group, we thought maybe there was another issue. Of course, we didn't give them any electronics. We couldn't even if we wanted to. We got them clothes, age-appropriate toys, shoes, winter coats, school supplies, crafts, board games, books, boxes of gifts. Everything was wrapped and decorated. We sign the names on the gifts and say, from Santa. We always laugh about how this Santa is Jewish, but because this family was never able to get their kids' names to us, we could only write age gender. So it was to eight-year-old boy from Santa. It was weird, but we promised the woman who recommended them we were accepting this family. We dropped off about two weeks before Christmas. More often than not, we never see the kids when we drop off because the families want to say Santa brought everything. So when we didn't see any kids, we thought nothing of it. We deliver and pick up almost non-stop for the two weeks before Christmas, so we are crazy busy. We get calls all the time to arrange pickup or drop off. We were called by them and they left a message about the drop off date. I didn't think about it at first, but we looked at the family and saw they had already been delivered. They call again, we answer, and this is the following. I wasn't the one on the phone here, but we talked about it right after and it still sticks in my head. The choosing beggar said, 
when are you coming with the rest? I'm a little confused. I believe we already dropped off your gifts. We mean the rest. The rest of, of what? We brought everything when we dropped off. Again, this was boxes of gifts. No, none of that was what we asked for. When are you going to bring the Xbox, PlayStation, laptop, phones, etc.? What we brought was everything. We are not able to give out electronics and we do not have anything more to offer you at this time. What the heck are we supposed to do with this trash? She then abruptly hangs up. Now, after the call, we realized they called days before Christmas. That means they had opened all the gifts we brought already. The nice new clothes and toys and everything else were great gifts, but had less porn value. We were disgusted. The number of kids who could have had a Christmas and didn't because those people chose to scam us was sick. They make you want to give up. You put in so much work, so much time, so much money into doing this, and these scammers make it feel like it's not worth it. The people we actually help do make it worth it, but people like this just ruin things. I wanted to go back and demand the stuff. They wouldn't have given it back, and it would have been very dangerous to try. It wasn't realistic to demand the stuff back, but I still wanted to. Though, I admit, it's not worth getting stabbed over. We did call the organization that recommended them and told them what happened, and that we were sure they didn't have kids. Unlike us, this other group is a large government organization. They were giving this family rent money, food for five people, appliances, and lots of other big items. They were giving them stuff for two parents and three kids, not realizing it was just two adults with no kids. We don't know what else happened after that, but we do know the other group dropped them completely. Because they decided to yell at us for not giving them thousands of dollars of electronics and complain that their gifts weren't good enough, they lost the people that paid their rent, their heat, give them their food, and replace their appliances when something happened, among other things. All I've got to say is, happy holidays, everyone. Oh my god, guys, those guys are just disgustingly greedy, and they deserve everything being taken away from them. I mean, realistically, it's lucky this whole ordeal happened, and you guys clocked that these guys were just scam artists. Imagine the amount of money they were taking out of that other organization. I mean, enough for three kids. That is, oh, I can't even dread to think how much money they must have been taking out of them, and they were just getting scammed the whole time. Wow. What I don't really understand is, on behalf of this couple who were already scamming a big government organization, why then go one step further and try and scam a small charity for Christmas presents? You're already getting your rent, food, appliances, all that stuff paid for. Are they that greedy that they want even more stuff on top of their whole lives being, you know, paid for by by the government? It's mental, but um, yeah, I guess this is choosing beggars. Some people are just incredibly greedy. Now moving on to our next story. Make items for our fundraiser how we want them or don't make them at all. Hi, everyone. I own a small business in which I handcraft items. I had an organization come to me and ask me if I'd be willing to team up with them for a Christmas fundraiser, as they've had a hard time bringing in extra money this year. The agreement we came to was that I would make one of my best sellers in a fabric exclusive to them, and they would get a portion of the sales. I also made sure they knew that I don't and never have done personalization. I do not have an embroidery machine, the iron-on letters often come off in the wash, and the sew-on ones are not cost-effective. Cut to last night. The organization said, We're almost ready for the sale to go live. We just need to know the size of the letters and the limit of letters per item. What? Letters? I reply. The letters to add names to the items? I'm sorry for the misunderstanding, but we've already discussed this. I have no way of doing personalizations and never have. However, I can suggest an Etsy shop that allows you to personalize a patch in any color or font you want. The patch is about the same cost as an embroidered personalization would run. The customer would need to order the patch themselves so they could personalize it however they wanted and have it sent to me. I would send them a picture when I got it to make sure it's right and add it to their item at no cost. Yeah, uh, that's not going to work. We want the items to be personalized as something special you would do just for us. We've already told people you'd be doing so, so we just need the letter size and limit. Thanks. I cannot do personalization. It is not a possibility, as I do not have the right equipment, and we discussed this prior. I'm sorry, but the answer is no. Also, you've hit me in the middle of my busiest time of year, and I simply do not have time to take on the extra work of personalizations. 
I'm still excited to sell the unpersonalized items as I normally sell them to make money for your organization. We do not want them if you're not willing to personalize them. Just to clarify, I'm willing to make items for you to earn your organization money with no extra work on your part, but you don't want to do that if I will not personalize them, which is something I can't do. Yes, so what are you going to do for us? We want these personalized. There isn't anything I can do. I hope you find someone else who suits your needs. You can't just leave us high and dry. We need you to personalize these. What if we find someone who can personalize them and you take the items to them and pay them to do them? You can charge enough to cover their costs. No, thank you. Have a good night. I ended the conversation at that point. That would be a nightmare at tax time. Not to mention I'm smack dab into my busy season, backed up on orders, and don't have time to run the items to someone every time I get an order for an item I'll make $8 off of. Suddenly, I think I understand why they're having so much trouble doing fundraisers. I would have been more polite, but the attitude of the coordinator was truly astounding. I'm willing to give up some of my profits and you're choosing how I make items and begging me to do them differently. Honestly, OP, I, I think you were more than polite enough, to be honest. Like, I don't really know what more you could have said there. It's not in your interest, really, to even be doing this at all, as, you know, you're making money for them. They're not doing any of the work, as you said. So I guess, yeah, they should be the ones who are being nice to you and trying to persuade you to do the work for them, because that's pretty much what you're doing. It's a great thing to, you know, do a fundraiser. But still, I mean, if you're not getting the benefit out of it and then you're having to go more on top of what you're already doing, then no, it's just obviously not worth it. I mean, what a ludicrous suggestion from the organization saying to you, oh, well, you know, you can just go and employ someone and then charge us back. I mean, seriously, that is just that is just ridiculous at that point. Uh, yeah, it sounds like you have a lot of work on anyway, OP. So I guess just get cracking with that. You're backed up anyway. You don't need these fraudsters. Get them gone. They're just not worth your time. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of r slash choosing beggars. Again, if you want to check out this lovely merch, then you can click this little icon right here. I know you guys that are still watching right now are my core fans that watch every single video. So I salute you. Yeah, if you want to help out the channel and help out me, then this is the spot to click on if you want some nice clothing. Also, if you do want more from r slash choosing beggars straight away, I have a full playlist of all my choosing beggars videos. So check that out here. And lastly, make sure you are subscribed to my channel so you don't miss out on my double daily content.